Patagonia is doing the exact opposite. They paid an ad to criticize themselves. Buy less, demand more. I don't want any other code. They have no idea why the vests became so popular. Patagonia is a company that grew by not wanting to grow. And nope, it wasn't a marketing strategy. They really did not want to grow. Which makes this success story even more so incredible, because today they are one of the leading outdoor clothing companies with a billion dollar in sales per year and 50 stores around the world. It is definitely a disruptive company in their approach to doing business in general, and there is so much to learn from it. They don't want you to buy their products, but if you do, they offer a lifetime warranty and can even repair items for free. So how did they do it? And how can all of this work? Patagonia was founded in 1973 by Yvonne Chouinard in California. Originally, he was manufacturing climbing equipment because he was himself an avid climber and generally an outdoor lover. Then he started to sell rugby t-shirts and other apparel. His idea was to sell exactly what outdoor enthusiasts needed and therefore the gear that he created was highly technical. It was intended for a niche market, it wasn't streetwear, and yet it later became so. Today, Patagonia is worn as a fashion brand and here I am with my Patagonia coat and it's really my most favorite one. I'm wearing it all the time when temperatures are low. I don't want any other coat. And when my wife tried it, she immediately bought one for herself too. Because it's just so pleasant. It's very light and yet it keeps me warm even when it's really cold outside. If you also own some Patagonia stuff, let me know what your experience is in the comments. So, Patagonia quality is definitely very high, and therefore items are also sold for a premium, right? It's expensive. But quality is not the only reason why Patagonia became so popular, of course. There are other great quality brands out there, so how did they do it? Patagonia is a mission-driven company and they engage in environmental activism. If you hear this for the first time, you might be like, oh, but that's mainstream. Today many companies do it to jump on the eco-friendly bandwagon, right? But no, in Patagonia's case, it's very different. It's much more authentic. They didn't do it from a business perspective. It happened naturally because of their origins. Patagonia was founded by a nature lover, and nature people have this in common that they are eco-friendly, without the society having to educate them. Therefore, Patagonia was extremely environment-driven right from the inception. They weren't surfing on any trend at the time. Today, 85% of textiles produced each year end up in landfills, and this problem is coming from what is called fast fashion. This is when brands come up with new collections and people are addicted to buying their newest products even if they don't need them. Patagonia is doing the exact opposite. For example, they ran this famous ad that said, don't buy this jacket, which explained how even their own jacket was having a bad impact on the environment, despite them doing everything to lower it. It requires 135 liters of water and generates 20 pounds of CO2, which is 24 times the weight of the finished product. Basically, they paid an ad to criticize themselves and the culture of consumerism, while mentioning that, of course, this jacket uses 60% recycled polyester, that it is knit to a high standard, and that it is exceptionally durable. They admitted that even they can't be fully eco-friendly, but gave themselves a pat on the back for being those who do the most and with the best intentions. And it is true that the durability of their products is impressive. Therefore, this is not just posturing, their engagement is real. If you are not satisfied with your product, they will take it back thanks to lifetime warranty and can also repair it for free in most cases. Today, Patagonia uses only organic cotton, which costs more, of course. Uh, they donate a percentage of their sales to the preservation of the environment. And in 2016, they even donated all their Black Friday profits. The reason they ended up as a high-end streetwear brand is because millennials and Gen Z are particularly conscious about the environment and are loyal to brands that align with their values. 
So Patagonia was simply ahead of their time when they decided to focus on environmental sustainability, since it now became a major concern for most people and companies. And if it's also a concern for you, hit the like button to show your love for the planet. See, if you hit the like button, you'll make this baby panda happy. And the planet happy. And me happy. Patagonia brand activism and product quality made it popular among an unlikely crowd. After the 2008 crisis, corporate dress standards became more casual and finance workers started to look for alternatives to suits. This is when the Patagonia fleece vest took over the streets of Manhattan and San Francisco. This phenomenon even got a name, Midtown Uniform, and a dedicated Instagram account. It was so popular that companies started to order customized vests with their logos on them and giving them out as part of welcome packages to their workers. It was a way for them to say, hey, look, we're choosing the vest from a responsible company. And yet nobody knows how it became popular in the first place. When asked about it, Patagonia wasn't even enthusiastic. They said they have no idea how or why the vests became so popular with the young corporate set. They build their product specifically for environmentalists and uh, laborers who work in the elements. Eventually, Patagonia made another shocking anti-consumerist decision, which fits right into their overall slow and sustainable fashion strategy. They completely stopped taking orders for customized logos on their vests, which is a loss of a significant chunk of revenue. In an official statement, Patagonia said that this policy change came out of concern for the environment, because branded vests are not durable by nature, since workers ditch them when they change jobs, and passing them on with a specific company logo is not so easy. Patagonia also generally didn't like this association, so even though it was bringing them good money, they wanted to dissociate themselves from this image. Especially that the brand was sometimes referred to as Patagucci because of its appeal to high-income individuals for the fashion side. Patagonia's intention is to be as environmentally friendly as possible and also socially responsible. In addition to everything said previously, they were one of the first companies to set up supply chain transparency supervised by an independent team. You can read pretty much everything about where they produce their products, how they transport them, and what is the cost of it to the environment. Uh, this is called radical transparency, and this concept, as well as Patagonia itself, are mentioned in my bestseller online course that teaches you business model innovation, meaning how to create an innovative company that stands out from its competition and grows fast. You can find the link to my course in the description of this video. Patagonia was also one of the first companies to use renewable energy sources for their buildings and printing catalogs on recyclable paper. Finally, on the social side, they strive to make all their workers earn a living wage. So they stand out from the crowd by going against fast fashion and planned obsolescence trends by selling expensive but durable and sustainable products. Their mantra is buy less, demand more, and it is deeply ingrained in their company culture. Basically, uh, they were protecting the environment before it was cool, and later this trend became so widespread that they were the best positioned to reap the benefits. Now they pretty much have it all. Their leadership mission is oriented towards sustainability, their actions are transparent, they strive to decrease emissions and use organic components, they recycle or repair their products, they do a lot of campaigns for the environment, they protect their workers' rights and improve wages, they donate some of their profits, and generally, they try to constantly improve all of that. Thanks to these actions, today Patagonia's brand is extremely powerful and definitely viewed as one of the most pro-environment and anti-consumerist companies, if not the most. Which means that, paradoxically, they grew by not wanting to grow. And that is definitely a disruptive approach. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. See you soon.